In this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of animation in Blender 3D and we're gonna focus on the camera movements around your design, around the car. Let's jump into it. So I just opened a new Blender file and we have our default cube. Before deleting it, I wanna mention about the logic behind this animations. So here on the default layout, we have two windows. One is the timeline, one is the working area, 3D area, let's say. And this is all we need for creating the basic animation. First of all, if you ever hit space by mistake, you might have seen there's like animation player or this timeline thing is moving and if you hit space one more time it just stops. So basically all the animation will happen here on this area. If I just click on this button we will go to the beginning, the frame number one. And if I click on this button we will go to the end frame which is 250 at this moment. Basically if we use 25 frame per second, if you have no idea about what is frame rate, what is even a frame, don't worry, it's basically one frame means one render, one image. And in one second we generally have 25 frames, let's say. So for 10 seconds animation we need 25 multiplied by 10, 250 frames. So basically by default we have here 10 seconds of animation. And to animate something, any object, we just need to mark the points on each frame. For example, on frame number one, the cube is here and I want it to be here on frame number one. So when my mouse is hovering around, I will hit I and we have some options. For example, I want to keep the location here. So as you see now, we have a little yellow diamond here. And if I want to go to frame 120, for example, and I want my cube to move G, Y here, I will hit I again and location again. So now I have another yellow diamond here. So if I just, or not diamond, but square, I don't know. So if I just move my frame, as you see, or if we just go to the beginning and hit space, it will just do the animation for us. So basically what we said, on frame number one, we want cube to be here. And on frame 120, we want cube to be here. The same thing if I go to beginning and if I say hit I and rotation, and then I go to frame 120 and I just rotate it something like this and hit I and rotation. If you don't do this I, like keyframe, if you don't add the keyframe, the animation will not work. So now if we start the animation again, now we are both changing the location and the rotation. And as you can imagine, the same thing is for the scale and many other things, but we will not focus all the stuff. So if I just add the keyframe scale here and then go to 120, and I don't know, scale it up, maybe something like that, and hit I, scale, go to first frame, hit space, and as you see, we rotate, change the location, plus scale the cube. But in this video, we're gonna focus on cars because that's what we do in this channel, so don't forget to subscribe if you are new. And very soon, I'm gonna import a car into the scene. But before that, I wanna show also the camera movements because this is what we will use on this video. So if I just pick my camera here, hit I, and you can also pick like location and rotation together. So if one click, you can decide both of them. So if I change the frame to 120, I can also move my camera around. I can just move it somewhere like this. And also we can rotate it a little bit. And when I hit I and location rotation, so now the camera will also do some different moves as you see. And you don't have to do it outside of the camera. So rather than this, we can go to numpad zero to the camera view. And if I hit now space to animate, let's see what happens. We somehow tracked the object, but it was kind of luck, let's say. So here, when the camera is selected, I can pick my keyframes and hit X and delete the keyframes. So let's go to the first keyframe again. And I will go to on my view tab, camera to view. So on the first frame, let's say I want my camera to be looking at the cube on this direction. So I will hit I still when I'm in the camera view and location and rotation. And on 120, I can just zoom out, move the camera as I want and hit I and location and rotation. So now if I just see the animation, as you see, the camera follows the cube in the direction that I made the keyframes. But it's not as smooth as I would like it to be because when I start to move the animation slowly, as you see, the cube is dragging a little bit left at the beginning because it's not exactly following the cube. We kind of did them randomly. So to fix this, let's add a car in the scene and let's take a look a little bit more detailed way. Here we have the beautiful GT and very nice environment around it. It's an HDRI projected onto mesh and if you don't know how to do it properly, you can watch my previous tutorial to learn. 
Let's not use the same environment, let's switch it to another one. Alright, this one also looks pretty cool, I really like this HDRIs and it is from today's sponsor Scenebox360. Scenebox360 is a collection of the high resolution CGI backplates and Match360 HDR images. They have many high quality images to help you bring your renders into the next level. You can use the code VERG25 to get 25% discount on their platform for all the products. And thank you Simbox360 for sponsoring this video. Now let's learn how to make this camera movement in a smoother way. So let's go to camera view if we have any camera in the scene and yes we do. So first let's say I want my camera from here to somewhere like this. Like from here to there. And I will not move the car, I will not go into details of how to rotate the wheels and all this stuff. But also the camera movement, I will not only do it from the camera view, because as we just saw, we can have different uh, problems. So I will go here to my window, and if it disappeared, if you are playing with something else, we can go here and pick the timeline. So here we have a clean timeline. I will pick my camera here to see if there's any keyframe already attached to it. Seems like no. So what we're gonna do is, first let's create another split here. To see the camera also from outside to show you better what I mean. Here we go. So what I want is I will not touch the camera here on the left. It's only for seeing from the camera view what's happening. And on the right I will just pick my camera and move it around to see what's happening. When I'm rotating the camera rather than making it randomly I want a pivot point and I want to rotate the camera around it. So to do that I'm gonna add an empty to my scene. Shift A empty plane axis. So this will be my pivot point for the rotation. So let's say somewhere a bit more center of the car, somewhere like this. And then I'll just hit M and on the collection I will pick scene collection. So here camera and empty are both next to each other. So I will pick camera and then hold control, pick empty. And on this area control P and object keep transform. Basically we made a parent object for the camera, so if I just pick this empty now without the camera and if I move the empty, it will also move the camera. So the good thing is if I rotate on Z axis for example the empty, as you see the camera is following using this empty as the pivot point. So now I want to decide what type of camera movement I want and first we can now also go to camera view, it will not affect us for the first part without, this, without starting the animation. So maybe we can start somewhere like this. I want this to be my starting point. So at this point, not the camera, but on the empty, I will hit I and location and rotation. So at the beginning on the first keyframe, we have this area. When I go to end, maybe not 10 seconds, maybe I want only five seconds. So here on the end, I can just type five multiplied by 24 frame per second, 25 frame per second, it's also fine. 125 will be my end frame. The final frame. So I come to the final frame and I just rotate the empty on the Z axis and also on the Y axis a little bit. So maybe somewhere like this. So let's hit I, location and rotation. I will focus here on the left. I will just uncheck the box camera to view. Zoom in somewhere like this. First frame, hit space. To me it looks fine, but if you realize at the beginning of the animation and at the ending of the animation, it kind of slows down. It starts slow and then it also stops slowly. What I mean is take a look at it again. Like it's slow, the camera slowly moves, goes faster, same st speed and then slowing down again at the end. You can see here better. It like slows down a bit more. So if you want it to be a linear transition there, if you want it always constant speed of the camera, while these keyframes are selected, we're gonna just right click, interpolation mode and we will keep linear. This way, now if I just play the animation again, we see that it's always constantly same speed, also at the end, rather than slowing down, it goes like a continuous mode. Before exporting the animation, I wanna add something else to my camera. If I just pick the camera here, I wanna see if we added depth of field before. Yes, we added a depth of field, but we don't have a focus object. So I wanna add another empty to my scene. And I want it to be around like the front of the car, somewhere like this. So I'm going to use it as the focus point for the camera. So I go to my camera, depth of field, and I pick this new empty we created on the scene. 
So now we will have more blurred background. And also while the animation, nothing will change because the focus point, the empty will always stay here on this area. So the camera will be always focused on this part of the car. Next thing we want to do to add more realism to the animation is the motion blur. So I will go to render properties and check the box motion blur. This will change the transition between frames in a smoother way. So now let's see some export settings, some render settings here on the output properties. Let's change it to vertical format because nowadays on social media, Instagram, TikTok and YouTube shorts, if you want to share some short animation, it's better to do it on vertical format and put some music behind it. So I'm just going to hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V and here 1080. So we have the vertical format now. Let's see if it, if it changed anything on our animation from the first keyframe. I see that now the car is not on the center at the beginning. So on the first frame, we can go to our empty and move it a little bit here and hit I again, it's important, and location and rotation. So let's see now how it looks. It, it looks better. And also on the final one, final frame, we can do the same actually. I see it a little bit off. So I will just move it there a little bit like this and hit I, location and rotation. And one more time. And it looks fine for me. All right, the next thing we want to do is the frame range. This basically decides automatically it's from the settings we have here from frame 1 to 125, so it's fine. And frame rate is what we talked earlier. I don't want to go too much into details of this, but if you want slow motion, you need to pick higher number like 50 or 60 so we can slow it down on post-production process. But if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, it's totally fine. You need to pick 24 or 25. More or less the same thing, let's pick 25 in that case. And more important part is the output. By default, it picks the temporary folder on your computer. So I want to decide exactly where I want to save my animation. So I will just click on this folder icon and give a name to animation. It's also very important because if you keep the same frame amount and the same name to another animation on this file, it will unfortunately oversave it. So you will lose the first animation. To avoid that, let's just give a name 01 and accept. Here on the file format, we're going to go with FFMPEG video format and encoding will be here on the container. You need to change it to MP4 basically because it's the most common file format for social media or it's, it's the most friendly as I found out. So you can just pick this one and here on the video codec, you can keep it default output quality. Let's just make it high quality. Why not? And that's more or less all. We don't need to change a lot. It's not that complicated. But the important part here, if you pick something else, you will not have the MP4 options. So also when I just clicked it one more time, it by default changed it to Matroska. I don't even know what is it. So I will just keep MP4 and high quality. After that, if I hit F12, it will render only this frame. So I will just go to render, render animation or control F12. So now we are rendering the scene frame by frame. As we are using EV, it's very fast. Each render is, I don't know, if it's written but each render is very short time if i zoom out probably i will see here yeah like half seconds or like a bit more than half second for each frame so we are rendering 250 frames and no no actually we are rendering 125 frames so you do the math it will probably finish soon we are almost on the half way to get the more realistic results of course you can also render it with cycles but each frame will be rendered one by one so you will get 125 renders which might take a lot longer than EV rendering. That's what I really like about EV. For animations, it's definitely amazing. Here we go, the render is done. So let's see it in the folder. And if I just double click on it, here we go. We have our animation in MP4 format. So depending on what you want on your final animation, of course, you can go creative with it. What I like to do is on final animation, I like to combine it with the solid view, like something like this. But how to get render out of it, let's also check this. On the render engine, rather than EV, we will just pick the workbench. As you see, even if I pick the render, because of the render engine is the workbench, this will be what we see. So I will go to render output. And again, I will just change the name to 02, hit enter and control F12. Let's render also this version. It's even faster than EV. It's like almost done. I think until I finish my sentence, we can be done with this workspace render engine version. And yes, I didn't talk slower. It was very fast rendering. 
So now we have two animations. One is like this. Doesn't look so interesting. And the second one is the final version. So what I like to do is, depending on the social media platform I will use, we can combine these two. You know what, let's do it together on my Instagram for today's post actually. Honestly, I wouldn't expect myself to make a tutorial on my phone, but everything has a first beginning, right? So I imported these two animations to my phone and I'm on Instagram and I said create a reel. So I'm gonna pick first this animation here and we need to add an audio of course to make it more interesting. So let's see what Instagram offers us. Okay, let's pick or let's see some more. Let's use something like that. I just picked this song. Let's say done. And I'm gonna add the next animation, the better animation here. Say next. Edit clips. This this point of this breaking point of the song, like this at the beginning. Here, I think around one second. No. Okay, let's see. With this beat here, I like the visuals to change to the final render, so it adds this nice from workspace to the final render thing. Okay, let's see transitions if we can add any trans. I hope this song will not create problems on YouTube copyrights. Ah, this zoom effect, for example. Okay, let's say done. 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 And let's add some filter. Ah, this Los Angeles looks kind of cool. Or Melbourne. Yeah, I like it. So that's summarize it all. Another thing I like to do is taking different animations from different angles of the car and combining them on different softwares actually. Like if I'm not doing it for social media or sometimes even for social media, I use Premiere Pro for my video editing because I learned it on the way of my this YouTube channel. But before that, I was editing my videos also in Blender. So still without closing Blender or without opening any other software, you can also edit your videos into another level. Let me know what you want to learn next down in the comments and if you are not confident with your Blender skill, especially for car design, you can learn it from my course, which you can find the details on my website. If it's your first time to see me and enjoy the video, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more car design related videos. See you in the next video.